What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the Madden 24 St. Louis Sentinels franchise. That is right. Welcome back. Our Cinderella run continues through these playoffs as we have made it all the way to the NFC Conference Championship. Boom, boom, boom. If you guys are fired up for more St. Louis Sentinels content, please like the video and consider subscribing for weekly Madden 24 content. Now, how fitting it is that we play Madden's favorite team and also fellow NFC East division rival, the Dallas Cowboys. I do not expect this one to be easy by any stretch of the imagination today. They are three overall higher than us and also have two more wins than us as well. Now, if you recall, we beat them earlier in the season. Pretty sure it was like week four or something like that. It was pretty much a blowout, but then they came back and beat us in week 11. So we tied the season series. So anything could happen today. But the question is, how did we get here to this point? How did the St. Louis Sentinels make it all the way to potential Super Bowl contenders? Well, we oh, score a lot of points, that's for sure, in the postseason, and we've also gotten a lot of picks. Kendall Fuller had three of those picks last week, and I believe he also had two or three of them as well in the Panthers game. And our secondary just in the latter stages of the season and in this postseason just continues to be amongst the best in the league. Justin Hayward also with one of those as well. And the other guy who has really got us to this point is J.J. Ford. He led the league in picks. You guys know this. But so far, knock on wood, no picks in the postseason. And he has really stepped his game up playing some of the best football of his young career. And then here is a guy that really needs no introduction at all, Dudley Saxton. Everybody that I see in the comments is a Dudley fan. I'm a Dudley fan. Dudley has been doing his thing in the absence of Brian Robinson with the injury, and he has just been playing out of his freaking mind, just averaging over 100 yards per game, 96 last week against Philly. That was probably his worst game in this little stretch here but Dudley has really stepped up and he is our running back number one for the foreseeable future and shout out to my guy Red Zone Rocky for winning last week's edition of Sentinel Sportsbook and winning himself a $25 Amazon gift card. Sentinel Sportsbook is an exciting new contest that I rolled out and I will be doing each episode that I am able to play. It is very simple and let me tell you about it real quick before we get into this NFC Championship game. You may have already seen in a recent community post, but I am rolling out an exciting weekly contest on this channel called Sentinel Sportsbook. No YouTube, this is not online gambling, so please don't cancel me. Before each episode, I will set spreads, overs and unders, and various player props, so be sure to subscribe so you can look out for my community posts. All you have to do is comment on the post with one selection that you think will happen in the game that's coming up. Only one selection per person, please. Once the episode drops, I'll put anyone who picked correctly in a wheel spin and the winner will win a $25 Amazon gift card or any gift card that you might want that I can purchase on Amazon and send to you via email. I'm doing this because I wanna make this content as engaging for you guys as possible. So I will do this before each and every episode as long as I am able to. So so please make sure you comment your pick in the community post. Make sure you're subscribed so you can see the community post. And let's start giving out some prizes here in this Sentinels Sportsbook. Brian Robinson is back today, coming off of a four to five week injury, but Dudley is our starter. I know they say that you should not lose your starting position due to injury, but you know, he's he's got the old uh, Alex Smith, Colin Kaepernick effect, right? Dudley is the guy. I did work Brian into some sets and some formation subs. He's still a really good player, and I still want him on the field. Uh, he'll be like our power back, and I, like I said, I got him in some different sets, but Dudley will be taking a majority of the snaps. As I mentioned, our secondary just is emerging, I think, into one of the best of the league. We have, uh, you know, Jartavius Martin, Quan Martin, Cam Curl, Kendall Fuller, who is playing out of his mind. <laughs> and Emmanuel Forbes, who actually led the league in interceptions. So our secondary is great. I also moved Jahan Dotson into the kick return role. I had Dudley Saxton there, but I don't want 
to play him more than I really need to because I don't want like some crazy injury to happen and I just think it's safer to have Jahan in that role and we're really going to need all hands on deck today guys as we take on a playoff rival Sentinels and Dallas Cowboys it does not get any better than this coach it's not often you have to play someone for a third time but you're facing a familiar foe in the Dallas Cowboys what are you expecting in this game I mean chess match because I want plus play recognition for sure it's gonna be a battle of wits we know them they know us and we're gonna find out exactly who knows the other better this weekend dallas is a very difficult team to play in madden they are just loaded their roster is loaded and both teams will have plus five pl plus five play recognition so i guess it kind of just offsets and we're just gonna have to take care of business and be a very very difficult team and the dallas cowboys are amongst the top in the rankings in terms of offense you see they're fourth in points per game fourth in total yards third in average pass yards and i'm cool with defending the medium pass i think that's a good place to start because dak has a wide array of weapons to work against and they're also very good defensively and you know what my great great grandpappy always told me if it ain't broke don't fix it so i am gonna continue to go run outside now fun fact i didn't know my great great grandpappy but i feel like if i did that is something he definitely would have said huh? still without chase young but if we somehow beat the cowboys today and make it to the super bowl chase will be back but we took a huge blow last week losing our rookie star development center or superstar actually he's superstar development center will devlin out of michigan so that one does suck and as far as the cowboys they actually got okay michael gallup not gonna be here tyler biotish so both starting centers aren't gonna be here and then some more uh role player types so you know no tony pollard no cd lamb no dak prescott on that list uh but a guy can dream right but anyways guys we are here we are ready to play the conference championship against the dallas cowboys at at&t stadium in arlington texas and if you guys are fired up and you're loving this st louis sentinel series please like the video consider subscribing because i drop madden 24 content weekly and now we got a weekly contest for you guys too so without further ado guys let's get down to at&t stadium in arlington and get ready for the game jj ford and dak prescott dak has never been here before i don't think I uh, don't think he's ever been to a conference championship. I could be wrong, though. Cowboys get eliminated from the playoffs so much, I can't keep up with it. But J.J. Ford, the biggest moment, the biggest stage so far in his young career. We're here in Jerry's world. The pyrotechnics are going. The crowd is into it. But the Cowboys choke in the playoffs in real life. Can they choke in the playoffs today? Brian Anger going to boot this ball back to Jahan Dotson. So Sentinels will receive the opening kickoff. And our offense is going to get to touch the ball first. And our offense has certainly been clicking. Led behind this man that you are about to see on your screen, J.J. Ford. Over 5,000 yards as a rookie. Those 21 picks, very concerning. But, and I hope this doesn't come back to bite me later in the episode, has not made the crucial mistake so far yet but we are going to go start off at least going to what has worked for us uh thus far in the postseason and that has been the outside run to dudley saxton now we do have micah parsons to deal with on that right side so have to be careful about him dudley with trying to put an opening uh opening drive juke there on cedric wilson and dudley goes down no No, 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 no. That is not allowed to happen. Not. Are you kidding me right now? Are you actually kidding me? Now, Brian Robinson is back, so that is good. But Dudley is the guy, man. And we just hope that Dudley can come back. But got to have next man up mentality. Second and 10 here. Let's see who can get open on some of these routes. We're going to try McLaurin. And it is going to be an opening drive. What did I just literally? Oh, my God. This game is starting out so bad. Dudley Saxton gets injured. I just said J.J. Ford hasn't made the big mistake yet. And what do we do? We throw a pick right to Stefan Gilmore, who has really been our kryptonite every time. That was a good route from Terry. 
Uh, wasn't the best ball placement from Ford. Stephon Gilmore jumps the route. And just like that, we give it to Dak Prescott and this offense. You look at Prescott's season. He had a pretty good season himself, too. Didn't have the yardage that uh, J.J. Ford. And look at that. No. No. Dudley is not going to come back in this game. I'm trying to think. Was I? I? I was good today. I was good today. My karma should be on point. I did not do anything. I don't do anything bad anyways, as it is. But oh, Dak going to get sacked there by Jonathan Allen. Thank you. Definitely needed that. But I didn't do any. My karma should be in line. You know, I, I did everything that I was supposed to do today. So I don't know why all that happened, but it did. So, OK, but a nice sack there by Jonathan Allen, nonetheless. So Prescott uh, going to be dropping back in shotgun. He is going to check it down to his receiver there, Romeo Dobbs, who is a Packer in real life. He uh, absolutely carved up the Dallas Cowboys. So very ironic that he is now on this team. But uh, very interesting Dak coming out single back here. So we're going to actually man up. I also did a guest pass as well. So hopefully somebody can get to Prescott and it's going to be a nice Pass to CD Lamb. Emmanuel Forbes did get him, but just like that, the Cowboys are now inside the 10 yard line. That changes things mightily, guys. Not having uh, Dudley Saxton really, really changes things indeed. Again, luckily, Brian Robinson is back, and Tony Pollard is just met there by Cody Barton and a few of his best buds. Cody Barton going to do the Jair Alexander, uh, buckle the seatbelt, whatever that. I'm probably way off. That's probably. Something completely different. Uh, but anyways, regardless of post-play celebrations, we are going zone here. And hopefully Prescott going to step up. Got a crash on him. Prescott dives over Justin Hayward to give the Cowboys the opening points of the game. And if these first couple possessions from us and the Cowboys are any omen of what the rest of this game is going to look like, I may be seeing you guys in the offseason next video. I know it's early, but this is the Cowboys. We got to match intensity. They're already getting moment momentum here. And the momentum says home team QB is immune to pressure. So we have to go to our coveted PA single back X bunch nasty because we just got to do it. And there's Samuel. No news there. No shocker there. As Curtis Samuel tends to get open on that play, which is why I only call it once per game. And now Sam Williams the defensive end going to go down, grabbing his knee. How about Brian Blocks here? We're coming out shotgun spread formation. Going to be a little levels concept and just looking for someone to get open. This time it's McLaurin, but J.J. Ford misses him. Okay. So Ford, not exactly uh, crisp, crisp on his passes today. Typically, he is very crisp on his passes, but he's a rookie. It's the biggest stage he's ever been on in his life. And uh, maybe that's getting to him a little bit. Not uh, quite sure. We're going to check it down to Robinson. Robinson catches it out of the backfield. That was clutch as we do get it down to the 33-yard line. We're going to motion out George Williams here, the big wide receiver out of Florida. This is going to be a lead run here to Brian Robinson. So need some good blockers. And we do get him. I'm trying to find the hole. That was on me. There definitely was a hole there, and I was kind of indecisive if I wanted to go to the left or to the right and uh probably should have gone to the right but i didn't i went to the left and there you go that's only a pickup of three so now second and seven here we're on the 30 coming out single back seeing who's gonna get open here we're gonna try terry and terry is gonna haul it in only for a minimal gain and that brings up third and four it's a big one here guys i don't think that we're gonna be able to win by kicking field goals here we're gonna streak mclaurin but that's stuff on gilmore out there so i probably won't try him but i see Jahan dotson who's our new kick return specialist getting open right there in the middle of the field Jahan has been pretty viable third option you know behind Mc well really a fourth option it's mclaurin samuel our tight end bart burns slash uh logan thomas who also played very well when bart was hurt but Jahan has been a pretty serviceable you know third to fourth option and he comes up very big there as things were starting to look a little dicey now Dudley had the outside runs going how about Brian can Brian have the outside outside runs going he's definitely not as fast as Dudley which is one of the reasons why I think Dudley did so well on this concept yeah you see kind of kind of getting just doesn't really have that speed 
like Dudley does to get to the second level. Three and a half to go till the end of the first. Seven nothing is your score. We got the ball on the nine yard line and we're gonna come out play action. So show me who wants to get open. Is it gonna be Terry? We're gonna try Terry in the corner, yes. Oh man, that was dicey. I had Terry and whoever R1 was, I think that was Logan Thomas, the tight end. And I, I saw one safety back there that was uh, Donovan Wilson, I believe. And I was torn between going to Thomas or McLaurin. I was trying to see what uh, Donovan Wilson was going to do. And I made the right decision. I held it just for as long as I possibly could. Found Terry in the back corner of the end zone. So here we go now. Here we go. Dak with the cadence. Yep. Everybody loves that. And it's going to be a quarterback keeper. But Dante Fowler Jr., who was injured for a couple games. He's back healthy. Stops Dak for a loss of three. Dak coming out gun again. Two wide receivers behind him. So all options are on the table. Another quarterback keeper. And this time we're able to get him for a loss of one. So Dak really, uh, you know, I mean, he, he can run. Sure. He, he could definitely run. Not taking that away from him at all. But I wasn't thinking that I was really going to have to, like, you know, change my option defense to conservative or anything like that. But uh, maybe I am. Now, this is a big one here. Need to get some pressure on Dak. Khalil Max back there. And nobody can get to him. And wide open is CD Lamb. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. I hate the Cowboys so much. <laughs> so much i mean i thought that we had dak dead to rights we had khalil mack back there we had james smith williams back there dak able to roll then for a second i thought that he was gonna run so i hit the r3 you know button to kind of that that alerts the dbs and or linebackers whoever to kind of roll towards him and somehow we just lost track of cd lamb DBs cannot cover receivers for that long. I mean, if you got a quarterback who has, you know, seven, eight seconds back there, which is seemingly what Dak had on that one, you can't guard, especially star receivers like CeeDee Lamb. You just can't guard them for that long. Luke Schoonmaker going to catch it for a gain of six. Cowboys on the move again. Only going with a three-man rush this time. Uh, also, CeeDee Lamb has his X-Factor on, so that is absolutely terrifying now can we get some pressure on Dak we cannot he is going to dump it down to Romeo Dobbs and that should take us to the end of a very interesting first quarter I mean Cowboys pretty much owned it but Sentinels and JJ Ford did come back with that clutch touchdown reception now we are out passing the Cowboys definitely not out rushing them I still can't believe man still can't believe our guy Dudley that is just so so unfortunate at a time where he was playing the best football of his extremely, extremely young career. But it's the NFL. Injuries happen. Can we get the Cowboys off the field? We cannot. It's going to be Jake Ferguson, the other tight end, who is definitely playing better than Luke Schoonmaker in real life. But they got Schoonmaker as their starter for whatever reason in this Madden sim land. <laughs> Dak also perfect as well. Seven for se seven of seven for uh, I think I said 93 yards and Cowboys coming out with zero wide receivers. I love it when teams do this because I always call my little 60 out jacks blitz play. So hoping that it pays off here, but it's not usually an outside run. That one got scary for a second, but Cody Barton was there to shut it down for a minimal game. Cowboys coming out zero wide receivers again. So hoping this is like a fullback dive or something. It's going to be Pollard. He's shifting around and somehow, oh my God, not even, that was Benjamin St. Juice. Benjamin St. Juice denied Tony Pollard, even with the second effort and keeping those legs churning. Pollard was not able to get it across the plains. Now, can we get a huge, huge goal line stand here? That would just be awesome if we could and it looks like we are gonna tackle Pollard and Zach Martin the all pro right guard goes down and I think that uh Mike or Mike McCarthy will probably kick a field goal here on fourth and three he will so how about that Dallas goes zero wide receivers on all three of the plays from the one yard line didn't even ever entertain the idea of passing it so uh Caleb Shudak Actually, it's not, uh, what's his name? Brandon Aubrey. Brandon Aubrey's not here. It's Caleb Shudak, who was actually waived by the Titans in real life. Not sure what happened to Brandon Aubrey, but he's a very good kicker. So not having him in this one, fine with it. See what uh, Jahan Dotson does 
in his new kick return roll. Ooh. Ooh. Had a seam there for a minute. This one smells like draw play to me. Oh, yeah. It smells like draw play. Got to ID up Leighton Vander Esch as the mic. And I miss Dudley so much. Brian fighting forward, turning something into nothing. One thing we're not going to do in this game is uh, we're not going to become one dimensional. So we're going to give Brian an opportunity to test the outside here. And the blocking is just virtually non-existent. And now Curtis Samuel goes down. We are losing our key players in this game, guys. And with only one team standing in our path to the Super Bowl, don't want to be losing key players. It's it's not good. Now, Dallas has a double linebackers in the gaps here. I highly doubt this will be an actual blitz, but you never know. And uh, it's, no, it's sure not. I see George Williams. I need you to hang on to it, George. Thank you so much. George Williams converting, moving the chains. Keeping this drive alive. And Curtis... <laughs> Curtis Samuel's not going to come back now. This is uh, it's a bunch of tomfoolery. It's a bunch of malarkey. It is what it is. Just have to play through it. Jahan Dotson, you are streaking up the field here, my friend. This is going to be another play fake. Same kind of pass that we hit McLaurin on for the touchdown. And he's opening this one, too. Need you to shake somebody, Terry. St. Louis Sentinels. St. Louis Savior. Coming up big in the big moments. Terry playing his career with Washington, of course, has never tasted this much postseason success. And I really want him to. Terry is a former Ohio State Buckeye. You guys know I live here in Ohio. He's a great receiver and uh, just hasn't really had the chance to blossom being with the commanders slash Washington football team slash whatever the heck they want to be. Tight end attack here. We're rolling out with Ford. Show me East. Why is nobody getting open? It's Bart Burns. Yes. Dot from JJ Ford. Fit it into what seemed to be non-existent, a non-existent window. Normally, Bart Burns gets open quick on that tight end attack play. And uh, he did not. But Ford with the highly accurate pass, making up for his... His mistakes early on in this one, and Sentinels are going to reclaim the lead here. And okay, guys, we are back, at least for now. I was kind of scared there for a little bit. Not going to lie to you. We were playing pretty poorly. You know, Cowboys are already such a tough team to play against in Madden. You don't want to give them full momentum. But it appears that our boys, Coach Smalls, you know, Coach Smalls, he's a He's a tactician. He's a philosopher. I'll bet you he pulled those guys aside and said, you know, the quote of the year, it's a fumble. Oh, my God. St. Juice recovers it. I don't even know who the Cowboys kick returner is. It's Julian Harris. He's a seventh round rookie out of Boise State. It looked to be clean as well. Get a second look at it here. Who was it? I see Emmanuel Forbes was in there. Also, Brian Robinson Jr. I think Ford I think Forbes or maybe Eifert, Eifler, Eifert, Eiffel Tower. I don't know. It was Forbes, I think. Doesn't matter because Julian Thomas coughed it up and St. Juiced on the recovery. And that is just absolutely huge. We have a chance now to really open this thing up. And I really want that to happen because teams in the second half they can be so deadly against us. There's Logan Thomas with room to roam. He's still going. Push the pile, Logan. Well, he just got injured. So all that work, all that pushing of the pile doesn't net a touchdown, but it nets another Sentinels injury. Okay, Brian, this is your time to shine. One thing about Brian, he didn't always have the yardage, but he definitely had uh -huh. the touchdowns, and there was just no space, man. There's just no space at all. Micah Parsons and rookie linebacker Eric Rush out of Miami. I mean, come on, dude. I am sitting here trying, trying to figure out what I, what my, why my karma is so bad. Now, why stick to McLaurin? Coach suggested it too. I don't like what that linebacker is doing. He's blitzing. So we are going to give Cherry a shot. And Terry with his second touchdown of the evening. And he has been our spark plug, our MVP so far in this game. We are about to potentially go up 21 to 10 against the Dallas Cowboys. And they are the only team that stands in the path of us 
getting a chance to hoist the Lombardi trophy. Now Dak is empty, so we got to see if we can get we need we need some pressure. We cannot let Dak just sit back there and become a surgeon, a doctor on the field and carve us up. Got to figure it's Pollard again here, but Dak is changing the play and of course, as I say that, it's not it's going to be Shoemaker the tight end. Oh man, dude. I, I swear that was a I'm sure that was a run at first. I did a little audible, so I'm sure Madden, you know, they uh, are psychic after all. They're programmed to know what play you're going to call, or so I'm told, so I suspect. But at any rate, it was a nice play from Dak. He's got his boys, the boys, them boys, all the way to the 15. John Allen with pressure. Oh, my God, almost got to Dak. Don't know how he got that one off, but get it off he did. Coming out 3-4 here. Ball is on the 10. Very close to the two-minute warning. Dak also has a fullback in here, so it could be a Pollard run, which it will not. It's going to be a C.D. Lamb touchdown. See, this is why I wanted to get as much of a cushion as I possibly can, because they have so many weapons. C.D. CD Lamb, the uh, five-year pro in this game out of Oklahoma, doing himself a little dance, getting all his boys fired up in the end zone. And the Cowboys get the ball first as well, so we kind of need a long, methodical drive here that ends in points or else I'm not 100% confident that Dallas won't score. How about a block kick? <laughs> oh, St. Juice was so close. Not gonna go away from the run here. I mean, so far, it just hasn't worked out at all. Even though we did make run outside our focus, it's just Brian is not Dudley Saxton, but we might have a chance here. Somebody please put a body on Leighton Vander Esch. Brian is struggling. He is struggling. Now, Dallas does have a very good defense. I will give him that. So, you know, could not necessarily all on Brian. It was looking like Dudley's first carry was kind of like that as well. But things just felt so much more fluid with him. And uh, losing him is a big loss indeed. So second and eight. Let's see who can get open on this one. George Williams on a nice little delayed route. George, the big six foot nine receiver. Towering above all the other DBs out there. Picks up a nice game. Ford also with three touchdowns in this half. Screen pass to Brian. I like that. Haven't thrown any screens this game. This should uh, hopefully be a nice pickup here. Also want to try to kill some of this clock as well. Brian is open. Need some blocks. We got some good ones. Brian making some men miss. Stefan Gilmore was the closest one to us, but he had a nice block from, I think, Terry. Terry McLaurin does throw... Pretty good blocks. I will give him that. Now, we're going to go draw play to Robinson here. May not be the best call, but that clock is not our friend here. Old father time. Oh, my God. Leighton Vander Esch just tombstoned us like the freaking Undertaker. And that will bring up second and long. JJ Ford got his X-Factor dots on. This is going to be a shotgun with a play fake. So, need some protection or else we may not be able to get this off. And we're not going to because Micah Parsons is going to sack us. 11 from heaven just sent JJ Ford down below on that one six feet under pretty much and with only a minute to go I mean what can we what what's really gonna happen here I mean probably nothing so I'm gonna let this clock run out for as long as humanly possible punt the ball back to the Cowboys and just be happy going into the locker room up by four that was devastating Ford hasn't really gotten sacked too much. We've been uh, keeping the pocket pretty clean for my guy, but it's just so hard to run against these Dallas Cowboys, especially not having Dudley back there. So we'll see if the Cowboys even attempt to do anything here. They're going to have less than 20 seconds, all only two timeouts as well. So hopefully they don't because I really want to go into the locker room with the lead. And after a six-yard run from Pollard, Dallas will be content to go into the locker room, and I am as well. So they do get the ball back after halftime. We are lighting it up in the passing game, but our running game is actually literally non-existent. Like it doesn't, it doesn't not exist. So it's the six and the one seed on the NFC, Sentinels and Cowboys, seven and the, the two lowest seeds on the AFC. God, How about that? The Bengals and the Chargers, who shout out to all you Chargers fans. Y'all got a head coach now, all right? You guys may just be contenders right away. Now, we're going away from, uh, you know what? We're going to do run it inside, okay? Outside run did not work for us at all. And uh, we're going to do defend. 
I'm going to stick it, defend medium pass. Worked out pretty well. And we'll see what the second half has in store for us. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, my God. That was almost a opening drive uh, disaster there from the rookie Julian Harris as he almost housed that thing. Luckily, we were able to get him before the damage was done. So Dallas taking the field here. Down by four. Got great, great field position to start. Let's see if Dak goes to Pollard out of this single back set. It looks like he will. And we are there to meet him. Or are we? Okay, David Mayo had a shot on him. Wasn't able to get him. But Cam Curl, who has just played great for us, leads this team in tackles. As a matter of fact, was there to stop him. So we're going to audible into some pressure here. Really haven't. Dak hasn't been faced with too much pressure in this game and the few times he has he was still able to do some Fire damage science. and no somebody please get schoonmaker please get schoonmaker kendall fuller's there to get him and this uh starts to the second half really couldn't be starting any any worse going pressure again man but i've been getting burned on it so don't know how much longer i'm gonna be able to do that we're gonna try and wide open as brandon cooks dallas takes the lead in about 45 seconds that was very easy, very easy indeed. And the Sentinels are going to have their backs to the wall here to start this one as we now play from behind. And that didn't take long at all. We'll trust Brian again, see how uh, shifting the focus to running it inside fares. I mean, definitely better than that was better than any run in the first half. Might be Robinson's longest run of the afternoon. And I uh, think we just kind of kind of test the run game here, you know? Good teams, good running teams, which not sure that that's what we are, but good running teams do not go away from it in times of trouble. Leighton Van Der Esch just clotheslined us, but it was a good chain mover. We have to ID up Leighton Van Der Esch as the mic every single time, I feel like, because it's just impossible to run against him. Brian with a nice move. Okay, that play looked like it was doomed from the start, but Robinson able to turn nothing into something there. Micah Parsons was able to wrap us up but so far it's been all brian robinson and i'm totally fine with that taking some of the pressure off of the rookie shoulders jj ford is not a bad idea although he did perform very well in the first half and so far it is the brian show ball very close to midfield we're coming out shotgun tight formation here have nice little mesh concept working and uh, we're gonna give it to bart burns there's a flag tell me that's not holding would love to see a roughing or something like that All right, there we go. Roughing the passer. That is what I'm talking about. Micah Parsons, okay. Micah is uh, one of the best in the business, but he is ultra aggressive. Coach is saying TE attack, and that is uh, totally fine with me. Although, usually I roll out to the left, and I just saw a Cowboys player creep right up to that spot. So may not be able to roll out on this one here. We're not going to be able to, so we're going to hopefully touch past it. Yes, thank you. Finally was able to touch pass it there. Threw it over the head of Leighton Vander Esch. Bart Burns, who is probably going to win uh, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Made a nice play there. And we're going to go back to the same rollout that netted us points earlier in the game. So what will the result of this one be? Stay tuned to find out. I need some... Oh, God. Didn't even have to throw that away, man. Didn't even have to throw that away. But... Micah Parsons was only a couple inches away from me, and I did not trust my blocking, but I should have because Bart Burns was able to pick him up right there. That wasn't even Micah Parsons. That was Demarcus Lawrence. But right there, I'm like, yeah, I'm toast, you know, because normally I would be. So I threw it away. But as soon as I pressed that button, it's almost like he got wrapped into a weird animation there for Burns. And look, I had Robinson so open too. Bruh. Field goal would tie it. So that is not the worst thing in the world, but want to score here and reclaim the lead. So let's just do that. If possible, nobody's getting open. Just got to throw it away. Kind of had tunnel vision on McLaurin. I was scared to throw it. Kicking the field goal, not the worst thing in the world. So this is a short one, but the wind is howling to the left here. So got to make sure that we don't miss it and we should not miss it. And this game is going to be tied. So thriller here, back and forth contest. Please don't go anywhere. Grab some popcorn. Grab yourself 
a nice tasty beverage and let's freaking go. And I'm kind of torn right now between pressure has not worked. Okay. Pressure hasn't worked on Prescott yet in this game. Still need to continue sending it, I think, but he's he's made the right decisions. And when faced with pressure, he's only has one incomplete pass this whole entire game. And Luke Schoonmaker has 89 yards. So, I mean, that's that's the day for this Sentinels defense. And this is easily, easily the worst that they have looked in quite a while. And going to need to do something good here. There's Schoonmaker. I can't with this guy, man. I cannot with freaking Luke Schoonmaker. <laughs> Why do I feel like tight ends? Tight ends always play so good against us. I don't know. I need some pressure on Dak. Nope, it's just going to be Brandon Cooks continuing to assert his dominance. Dak now at 250, also with those two touchdown tosses that he had earlier in the game. I'm going to audible. I'm going to come out pressure, but I'm audibling it into zone. Sometimes I feel like that works a little bit, and maybe I'll drop uh, Cleo Mack or somebody out here. In coverage, just got to keep eyes on Schoonmaker. Nice play there from Cam Curl, knocking it out. Big third and one upcoming. All right, Sentinels, if you have anything in the tank, now is your time to show us because we really got to get them off the field. Oh, oh no, it's a play fake. No, what's going on? I'm so confused. Jake Ferguson, that was a good fake from Dak. And if, it, if he would have handed it off to Pollard, he would have been met there in the backfield by David Mayo. Oh, yeah, Mike McCarthy just having a great, great game calling plays here. He's calling uh, tremendous plays and just Dak with these play fakes, man. It's going to be a touchdown. It's going to be a touchdown for Brandon Cooks, his second of the game. This offense for Dallas is good. And we're not, We, you know, the reason why we're here is Carolina and the Eagles, we force turnovers. We force Bryce Young to throw interceptions. We forced Jalen Hurts to throw four interceptions. Both those games, we had sacks as well. In this game, we have none of the above. Now the screen is shaking too, and my offensive play art is distorted. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Let's see what we can do here on first down. Four. Oh, we're going to go tear. Oh, it's... Mm. And I hope this doesn't come back to bite me later in the episode. Has not made the crucial mistake so far yet. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Stefan Gilmore. That was a great play by him. That was a that was an all-star play. Let me break it down for you guys, okay? I, I made the right decision. I didn't throw it correctly. So it's a play fake. We got Bart Burns on a leak. We got Terry on a comeback route. Boom. I'm thinking, okay, Ford has some room to roam. But Gilmore's right there. But then all of a sudden I see Terry right here. And I'm like, let me get it over the head of Gilmore. I did try to touch past it. I did. But apparently just wasn't good enough. But it is going to take a near flawless two quor quarter of football. If we have any, any chance of coming up here, and I feel like we're definitely going to need to force a mistake from Prescott, and Brian Robinson can't even pick up the first down. So, um, okay, we got 10 minutes. Won't be 10 minutes for your guys' time, but won't even be 10 minutes for my time, but 10 football minutes. I do play 10-minute quarters uh, to, to do something that's going to save our season. What that something is... Your guess is as good as mine, and uh, I don't really like any of these play calls, and I feel like this might just be a time where we look to the one bright spot that has actually, no, we're audibling it into inside zone here, because this may just be four down territory, not going to matter. It was a good play call by me. I saw there was no linebackers lined up there in the middle of the field. Cowboys still got all the momentum in the world here. I can barely see what my freaking play art is. And I'd see we got pressure. I'm also going to get flagged for grounding because Micah Parsons was there in the blink of an eye. Never had a shot. We are way behind the sticks now. Don't need to get it all back at once. We're going to have to get a decent amount of it back. George Williams is going to catch it for five. So I really wanted more than that. <laughs> I really wanted more than that. And this is a very, very tough place to be in. Uh, probably going to be looking for Terry first or maybe one of these other two 
routes. Let's see what happens. It might actually just be Terry Terry. Yes, thank you. Oh, my God. Keeping our season alive, if only even for a little bit, because that was some like if we didn't pick that one up, that's game. You might as well call that game right there. But he did pick it up. And now we just have to be careful that uh, I do not turn this ball over. So what's going to happen here? Where I see Bart Burns, please fit it in there. Bart toe taps on the sideline. Forward up to 285 now, and we are nearly in the red zone. Coach calling PA cross. It's not the X bunch nasty. So this is a good play for me. Now the screen's not shaking anymore. We could just kind of simmer down, relax here. Let's see if one of these crossing routes can possibly get open. Uh, maybe George, you're six foot nine. It's gonna be a pick from Trayvon Diggs. And uh what did I say at the beginning of the game? And I hope this doesn't come back to bite me later in the episode. Has not made the crucial mistake so far yet. I, I knocked on wood. I remember that. Ford had been clean in the playoffs. He's thrown three of them jaunts in this one. And uh, barring something, some amazing defensive stand by us. Next episode may be the off season. Now we do got the Cowboys in a third and long here. I mean, this literally is the season. Game's probably over anyways, but if we don't pick this one up, it's definitely over. And Dak is gonna do some weird type of slide. So at least the Cowboys are giving us a chance. Now it's, it's a long shot. We gotta play perfect. We gotta pick up big chunk plays. We only got six minutes to go. But elite, it's a fake. Are you kidding me? Okay, Khalil Mack. Why? If you're Mike McCarthy, why would you call a fake there? Direct snap to Jake Ferguson. I mean, I thought for a minute it might work. But why would why would you do that? What reason is there to do that? I mean, there's there's no reason to do that. Now you just gave us a shot. I realize, look, it's not. A very good shot. George Williams is going streaking. Okay, Terry, I'm not testing that side. It's not happening. Look at George. Can we get it up there? Oh, my God. How? How am I not able to lob that over the head of Trayvon Diggs, man? I freaking tap this button ever so slightly. I hate this game. I hate this game. I don't hate it. I do hate it. It, it, it makes no sense. Like, it was a perfect read. It was a perfect read. George is also six foot nine. He beats, look, he's got Trayvon Diggs beat on press. And I tried to lob pass it. And it just, it's a bullet, it's a bullet pass, maybe a touch pass. I don't know. But it was definitely not the lob pass that I wanted to it to be. And uh four interceptions, guys, in this game. After throwing none. In the first two playoff games. Maybe you can say they're on me. Maybe you don't. I don't know. I think that uh, a couple of them were. Like that one to Stefan Gilmore. Where I tried to lob it over his head. But. I mean we just. I just got. I just got outplayed by the Cowboys in this one. I'll be the first one to admit it. Man that was a tough game. Four interceptions. For J.J. Ford, I I mean, the Cowboys, you know, especially in Madden, they got Trayvon Diggs, they got Stephon Gilmore. Those were the guys that had the picks today. And I will admit that I wasn't uh, my sharpest, but some things definitely did not go in our favor. Losing Dudley Saxon early, losing Curtis Samuel. Those are two big players. Curtis Samuel, probably losing him more of an impact than you would think. That last final interception that I throw uh, through looking for George. Well, the one before that looking for George Williams on the crosser to the end zone. That would normally be Curtis Samuel and he's faster than George Williams, better route runner, but we'll take a look at the stats here for anybody who played Sentinel sports book. And if you didn't play, you should because you can win money every single time. And all you got to do is make a pick, but Dak Prescott with the perfect quarterback rating, 327 yards, four touchdowns, Looking like how J.J. Ford looked in the previous outings. And then Ford almost hit 300. Did have three touchdowns, but those four interceptions were crucial. Dudley Saxon only took one snap, and then he got hurt. 
Ryan Robinson just could never get it going. Tony Pollard with 82 yards on the ground, so he played very well. And then, I mean, there's no excuse for Luke Schoonmaker to have seven receptions for 136 yards. McLaurin had 65, did have those two touchdowns, and D.D. Lamb also with two touchdowns as well. So 79 yards for him. I'm showing you guys those because I, I do set the Sentinels sportsbook uh, spreads and player props and all that stuff before I record it just because that's the way I should do it, and that keeps it fair. Um, and then defensively, I mean, Jonathan Allen had one sack, and then Diggs and Gilmore each with two interceptions. So look, we had a magical run, guys. I don't know if any of you thought that we would make it this far. I certainly did not. One game away from the Super Bowl, and now we got an offseason to figure out what pieces we need, what more small or large additions we need to this team to get us over the hump and get us to a point where we could contend for a Lombardi trophy. This hurts. No other way to put it. We knew exactly what they would do and we still couldn't stop it. Khalil, you're absolutely right, brother. And uh, might be your last time talking to Coach Smalls because you're up for a contract extension and you want more money. Next year, we will have a chance at revenge. That is true. But the Cowboys do, in fact, shatter our dreams, just like it says there on the screen. Now, uh, two new injuries. It looks like had we made it to the Super Bowl, um, Dudley Saxton wouldn't have been injured. Oh, he would have. Out six weeks, broken collarbone. And Logan Thomas out seven. Two broken collarbones. Those were some cheap shots. Dallas was targeting in that game. I'm telling you, they were targeting. But had we made it to the Super Bowl, we would not have had Dudley Saxton. So that would definitely have uh, made things more interesting. Yay. CJ Smalls gets a contract extension. Three years, $5 million. Whoopee. That's some big bucks there, Smalls. Uh, make sure you don't spend that all in one place. Now, what I'll probably do here, for those who are still watching, I may live stream the offseason. I may not. So if I do live stream the offseason, it will start from off-season staff week, probably. Um, I want to know the cap situation. Our cap situation, I don't. it's probably not going to be very good, uh, I'm thinking, unless that money kind of resets. How about J.J. Ford making a Pro Bowl as a rookie? You love to see that. Brian Robinson, or is that B. John Robinson? That, that's B. John Robinson. Okay, <laughs> number seven. Yeah, Brian's not uh, 90 overall. But uh, McLaurin, Scary Terry, makes it as a wide receiver no Bart Burns he got snubbed so that sucks anybody else any other Sentinels make the Pro Bowl here doesn't look like it Jonathan Allen in there as defensive tackle number two behind Vita Vea doesn't look like anybody else Emmanuel Forbes okay I mean he better make it he led the league in freaking interceptions and Jartavius Martin too also makes it as a free safety number two so lots of Sentinels in the Pro Bowl if there's a little bit of a silver lining, no, I'm not going to play that. Well, you can't even play it anymore. So, uh, yep. So it looks like it is going to be Cowboys and Chargers. Now, this is a very important week here, too, because we have we get to see who got their dev traits. We get to see yearly awards, a bunch of upgrades, probably going to be mostly just no. It's actually some big ones. Emmanuel Forbes gets an upgrade. So we'll continue to go man to man. On a manual that gets him up to an 85 well an 80 82 overall playing up to 85 gets plus two to man coverage maybe uh look and see if he has any new abilities he can use now that he's a little bit higher and bart burns guessing that he went up to superstar development because nearly positive that he won the offensive rookie of the year so we'll be able to see that in a minute and he did so we have a superstar development tight end now on our hands, Bart Burns going to be a two-year player. Future is very bright for him. And just taking a look at the yearly awards here, Jalen Hurts wins the MVP. How about J.J. Ford, though? He made it in the conversation, so he was 10th in the voting for MVP. No Coach of the Year nods, though, for Coach C.J. Smalls. Mike McCarthy wins Coach of the Year, and I mean, he was, he was playing a good game. He was definitely playing a good game. Offensive Player of the Year, Jalen Hurts wins it, and McLaurin was 10th on the voting so at least we got uh someone's name in there emmanuel forbes fourth in the running 
for Defensive Player of the Year, Micah Parsons. So we're seeing Cowboys who just beat us. We're seeing how uh, truly good this team is. Bart Burns does win Offensive Rookie of the Year. J.J. Ford not too far behind him. And then Dudley Saxton also in there as well. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to uh, Antoine Fields of the Cardinals. And J.J. or Justin Hayward gets a few votes. So he was in there. Jalen Hurts, best QB. J.J. Ford was number six. Best running back was Saquon. And Brian Robinson, even though he missed a significant amount of time, was still fourth in the running. So we got, you know, some Sentinels. McLaurin gets a fifth in the voting. C.D. Lamb, another Cowboy. So the Cowboys, Zach Martin, best offensive lineman. Andrew Wiley gets a nod. Damian Lewis gets a nod. But all these Cowboys, man, that this is truly how good the Cowboys are. Surprise, Leighton Van Der Esch didn't get it for uh, best linebacker. Emmanuel Forbes and Kendall Fuller, first and second for best DB. That's pretty cool. And best kicker, your boy, a.k.a. Joey Sly, wins it for the Sentinels. And, of course, the Cowboys do go on to win the Super Bowl against the Chargers. And Dak Prescott wins Super Bowl MVP. Mike McCarthy, coach of the year. So everybody who plays Madden, no stranger to seeing the Cowboys in the Super Bowl. Now, this is probably where I'll stop. Looks like we do have a little bit more cap space than I thought, but still not a whole heck of a lot. Uh, we're going to check and see who retired, you know, when the offseason starts. May live stream it, may not. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. If you want me to live stream it, I just might. If not, I'll record it. Um, but look, this was a fun, fun second season. We almost made it to the Super Bowl. And the sky is the limit for these St. Louis Sentinels. Thank you guys so much for supporting this series, this channel. Play Sentinel Sportsbook. It's fun. You can win some money. And I will catch you guys next time in the offseason. So that is going to do it for me tonight. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.